Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation on the CFA Level 1 exam for June 2015. In this presentation, we look at the weighted average cost of capital. Now what is the weighted average cost of capital or WAC? It is simply the rate of return a company must generate on an average risk project to meet the requirements of its investors. Now there are two things to keep in mind. The first is that the investors would expect a return equal to WAC only on average risk projects. If the company invests in a risk-free project such as buying treasury bills, the expected return by investors would be the risk-free rate rather than WAC. On the other hand, if the company invests in much riskier projects, then investors would require a return much higher than WAC. The second thing to keep in mind is investors includes both bondholders as well as shareholders. If a company generates a return equal to WAC, then it will be able to meet the requirements of both bondholders and shareholders. This concept will become clearer when we look at some examples. Let's start off by looking at a very simple example. Company A is entirely financed by equity. The re required return on equity is 10%. What is the company's WAC? And we ignore taxes in this example. Well, since the only type of investors we have in this case is shareholders, which expect a return of 10%, it follows that the company's cost of capital must also be 10%. Now let's look at a slightly more complicated example. Company B has $1,000 of assets. It is financed by $300 of debt and $700 of equity. The required returns on debt and equity are 6% and 10% respectively. What is the company's WAC? And we again ignore taxes. Unlike the previous example, we have both bondholders and shareholders for company B. How much return should a company generate in order to just meet the requirements of these investors? Well, the answer is pretty simple. We simply take the weighted average of the return for all of the investors and we compute the weighted average cost of capital. The weight that we assign to bondholders is simply $300 divided by $1,000. And we multiply that by the expected return on bonds, which is 6%. And then we add the weight for shareholders and multiply that by the required return on equity. We get a weighted average cost of capital of 8.8%. Now it is a bit clearer why we call it a weighted average cost of capital. The weight for each investor is simply their capital provided divided by total capital of the company. So far, we have been ignoring taxes in our analysis. What happens if we introduce taxes to the picture? How does the WAC change if company B were taxable? Well, taxes reduce the cost of debt because interest expenses are tax deductible. In the case of company B, we had $300 of debt and the interest rate was 6%. This means that the total interest expense would be $18. That is simply $300 times 6%. Now $18 would reduce the taxable income by the same amount. If company B was taxable at 40%, the after-tax income would only decrease by $18 times 1 minus tax rate, which is $10.80. This means that the company's net income would not decrease by the amount of interest expense of $18. It will only decrease by the amount of $10.80, which means that the after-tax cost of debt is simply the decrease in net income divided by total debt. 
which is 3.6%. In general, the after-tax cost of debt is simply the pre-tax cost of debt, which was 6% in our example, times one minus tax rate, which was one minus 0.4. 3.6% is the after-tax cost of debt. To compute WAC, we use this general formula. We use the weight of debt times the required return on debt multiply that by one minus the tax rate plus the weight of pref shares or preferred shares times the required return on preferred shares plus the weight of common shares or common equity times the required return on common shares or common equity. On the exam, they will tell you what is the required return on debt the required return on pref shares and the required return on equity. And if they do not give you this information, they will give you all the information that you can use to compute these required returns. For example, for debt, we usually use the yield to maturity on bonds that the company can expect to issue in the future or the yield to maturity on bonds that were just recently issued by the company. The required return on pref shares is computed by dividing the amount of preferred dividends by the, um, by the price of the preferred share. And finally, we have the required return on equity, which is probably the most complicated to compute. But we, but we use different models, such as the capital asset pricing model, to compute the required return on equity. We have not talked much about the weights of these capital components. The weights are supposed to be based on the target capital structure. So if we know that a company intends to use 40% debt, 10% preferred shares, and 50% common shares, that is the weight we should be using in this equation. Again, on the exam, they would tell you the target capital structure. If they don't, then we could use the market value of the capital components. So we simply look at the market value of debt preferred shares and common shares, and we assume that that is the capital structure, the target capital structure of the company. And we use that in this formula. We never use book value of the capital components. That's just historical cost. Ignore that for computing WAC. Let's look at an example and compute WAC. Here we have company C with the following capital structure. We have bonds, preferred shares, and common shares. And we are provided the book value, the market value, and the target weight for these capital components. We also have the required returns on each of these capital components, bonds, pref shares, and common shares. And we are asked that if the company's tax rate is 30%, what is its weighted average cost of capital? Since we have provided the target weights for the capital components, we simply use this information in our WAC computation. The target weight for bonds is 25% times the required return on bonds. Don't forget to adjust it for taxes. Plus the weight on pref shares times the required return on pref shares plus the weight of common shares times the required return on common shares. And we will get a WAC of 9.45%. Now suppose we were not provided the target weight. In that case, we would use the market value of the capital components in our calculation. Now, what will be the weights of these capital components? Well, first, we will have to compute the total market value of the company, which is simply $30 million of bonds plus $20 million of pref shares plus $50 million of common shares, which gives us $100 million of total market value. Then the weight of bonds is 30 million divided by 100 million, so 30%, times the interest rate, 
times the adjustment for taxes plus the weight of pref shares times the required return on pref shares plus the weight of common shares times the required return on common shares and we get a WAC of 8.86%. What we would not do is use book value of the capital components. Now this brings us to an end of this presentation. If you found the video useful, please make sure to like it and to subscribe to our channel. Please let us know if you want us to make a free video on a topic of your choice. Thanks very much for watching and we wish you the best of luck on the exam. Thank you.